Um, a, a question I was going to ask is, do you think that there's a problem like with the sub ripoff genre in the sense that if a lot of times when we see a watch that looks like a sub and what I'm, and what I mean, whenever I say looks like a sub, we're talking like three link bracelet. Mm -hmm. We're talking, of course, a dive bezel. We're talking circular, um, circular, sometimes maybe square, um, hour markers and loom plots, a date window typically. And then like the dive bezel, just, just kind of a generic dive bezel. Yeah. There's not a lot of details that need to be very specific, but we're kind of just keeping those, those core foundations in play. And a problem that I see is when people see a watch that looks like that, but it's not a Rolex. A lot of times we want to say, Oh, that's a sub ripoff. But if it's like a unique dive watch, like let's say a super ocean, from Breitling, right? Some people might look at that and like, I don't like that. Like, why is there this like white separated track between the color mm -hmm. dial and the bezel? Like, I don't like that or what? Yeah. So do you think it's just a position where, where Rolex has made the Submariner so ultra important and iconic to the dive watch genre that we hold every other dive watch in the world up against it. And we say if it, it that it needs to look like it, but it doesn't need to get too close to it. Because yeah. if it if it looks too much unlike it, we're going to call it ugly. Yeah. And again, of course, if, if it's too similar, we're going to call it a ripoff. So, like, do you think there's a problem with that? With that, like, general idea that people just do those two things? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great point. Again, it's like, you know, you want to be different, but you don't want to be. You know, I feel like the only people that can afford to be different is going to be the big name brands. They can have a different dive watch. Your Breitlings, your um, Omegas, you know, they, they're they different. They don't look anything like the Rolex Submariner, and, but they can afford that. You know, they, they yeah. have their own core base that they're like, we can sell these dive watches looking different because people love our watches. Whether that's, you know, the marketing behind Breitling and Omega or what it, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. <sighs> then you have you you step off into the problem of micro brands and other brands that they might have a couple of different deviations of divers but one of those two you know looks of their divers normally looks like a submariner i feel like that's just they know what works and what's the most popular dive watch on the world in the world yeah. it is the submariner and i feel like that's probably why and so you know you kind of get mad at the micro brands for you know almost copying and even you know almost copying i'm not saying like carbon like there are some i think seiko makes like their carbon copies yeah the only different look is it's a seiko not rolex but even just other watches that you know we've talked about the the monta the new monta watch that came out looked very similar the new ocean um, king yeah it looks yeah. you know similar enough where you can tell some similarities you know and you know especially yeah. with the black again i've i've said i think on this podcast i know in person multiple times i wish they would have made a blue dial blue bezel of that watch because i would have probably bought it um yeah but yeah. you know i feel like there are a lot of brands like that that you know they're trying to toe that line and sometimes they go too close to rolex sometimes too far away but the cost of going too close to Rolex is okay. Hey, we might get, you know, told we look too much like Rolex, but we're going to sell some watches or the other cost of falling the opposite direction is you're a micro brand that looks not anything like any dive watch anybody would want and nobody's going to buy it. So I feel like they probably lean more towards that. Hey, let's halfway look like a Rolex and we know that style works, but, uh, you know, then the, uh, then the opposite direction. And, you know, so I think, I think that's why a lot of people do it again it really just depends on what you want and you know, what you fight for. But there are a lot of people that, you know, they can't afford a Rolex Submariner that they want to watch. that look similar like the ocean King that I think it's a great fit for them. You know, if you want a black dive watch, but you're, you know, you're whatever your budget is 2,500 to 3000, you can get a brand new yeah. one of those and it looks great. But then again, you still r run that risk and a lot of people don't care but you still run that risk of, you know, Hey, I'm outside at a brewery one morning or morning. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm 8 AM at a brewery and I see this guy. No, first he you can't know, afford the Rolex. Now he's out here drinking at the brewery, he's waiting <laughs> on it to open. He brought his own 12 pack. <laughs> so I'm, uh, you know, I'm at, you know, something during the day and, uh, you know, I see one from afar and I, you know, either I go up and talk to the person or for some reason I I'm talking to this guy now. 
Um, and I say, oh, is that a submariner? Oh, no, that's uh, blah, blah, blah. And oh, yeah. what well, just look like, and, you know, and I know that for him, that probably feels like, no, oh, I know he wishes this was that 10,000 watts, but it's really this. Mm-hmm. And again, th- that depends on, do you want to have a carbon copy and hope nobody questions you about it or what your deal is? But, you know, well, everybody has different mindsets. Well, it happened at Publix whenever I was visiting you. I mean, yeah. you know, like I, I, I was wearing David's sub and, uh, and this Publix employee asked me if it was a sub and I was like, oh yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, uh, Samariner date. It's my buddies over there. And I looked down at his wrist and he had what looked like an exact carbon copy of a GMT master two. Now mm-hmm. it was, the I code, asked right? him, yeah, I, I, yeah. I just asked him, I said, it. I was like, yeah, cool. Uh, you know, awesome. Is that a GMT? Oh no, it's a, I, I think it was a, said it was a Timex or something. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's like, I think you're going to have on the very low end of the, of the pricing spectrum brands that are just going to carbon copy it and they don't care. Like you said, they just don't care because they know that some people are going to buy them. And I think those are the people that they want to look like a status that um, maybe they can't afford. And then I think when you get into like the micro brand space, like, you know, we'll use the monster ocean King, for example, that's that's kind of the problem that i see because that was that was something that you and i would like we kind of like argued about when it first came out you know you like because one of the first things you said is oh you know it looks like a submariner and i said yeah the 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 bezel i think you know because i think the bezel it looks like it's like it was pulled right off of a sub the dial looks a little bit different but that's kind of the whole idea is that i think like anytime that a that one of these divers gets a little bit too close like you said they run the risk of like oh well they're trying to copy and in some cases, like, you know, it's probably so convoluted at this point, we don't even know when they are or are not trying to copy. But that's why I kind of asked the question, like, like, you know, I, I wonder if like the Submariner just, it just reached levels that like, you know, like no other, I mean, even when you think like steel sports watches, people don't always mm-hmm. associate the 5711 Nautilus and the AP Royal Oak. They don't do that they don't really yeah. associate anything with a steel sports watch. But when you yeah. ask someone what's your favorite dive watch of all time, or what's the most iconic, or I say dive watch and you think blank, it's always the sub. And so that's why I wonder, it's like, yeah. well, maybe they just got so popular that through no fault of their own, these other brands, they can't even, they can't even put a damn 60 minute countdown dive bezel on their watch without being, sort of um kind of accused and and it's not to like yeah. to like come at you but you know i just thought it's like a yeah. it's an interesting topic because like i said there's yeah. two ends of those spectrums and you know i i think it's a shame that sometimes we say oh well that watch is ugly you know mm-hmm. um because it doesn't look like the rolex but then this one's like oh what are you doing you're getting a little close you know <laughs> yeah so th- there's I mean, there's yeah. i'm sure there's a gray area in the middle but i think as a watch manufacturer i bet and and they probably feel it too i bet i bet it's really tough to find that gray area Oh, four dive watches, you know, it, yeah. it, again, like, and that's kind of my point. I was harking at is like, it's tough to find that gray area. And why would you want to risk that gray area? If you don't, you know, if you're not Omega Breitling or, you know, big name yeah. watch brand that can afford to, Hey, this ain't a great selling, but if you have to have this watch that you're making a great selling watch, there's not a person in the world that would probably risk it and do something completely crazy that has the risk of losing him all this money. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that's Again, but I mean, I don't, I don't sit there and I think all dive watches have their place. And I mean, I love, as you, I've said on this podcast a lot, I love the super ocean heritage. I love the super ocean. You know, I, I don't have to just have a submariner looking dive watch, but I, in all seriousness, I'm only saying that because I have one. If I didn't have one, I'd be buying the submariner dive watch first. If I'm trying to buy yeah. a luxury dive watch, that's the first one I'm buying. Yeah. And now I can say I can buy whatever I want because it's off my chest and I have it. But, uh, yeah. you know, it's just that's just my thought and where I come from. 